open it out. Hey everyone, it's Jackie Padilla from Now This, and today I have Chef Melissa King. She's best known as the winner of Bravo's Top Chef All-Stars for Los Angeles season 17. How are you, Melissa? Hey, Jackie. Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm excited to have you today. We are not hosting a cooking segment. We are going to be talking about, a, I think, a much more pressing conversation today uh, in partnership with Ad Council's Love Has No Labels campaign uh, with the Fight the Virus, Fight the Bias initiative. Uh, you know, this is such an important, timely thing to be happening right now, uh, not only in 2020, but during the pandemic, and that's acknowledging uh, racism within the Asian community and towards Asian Americans, especially when we saw uh, the coronavirus strike globally. Uh, what has that experience been like watching you, watching this all unfold and kind of seeing your community directly be impacted by this? Yeah, um, you know, it's it's very hurtful. Um, and it's, it's obviously something that's been happening for a long time, but I think the pandemic has increased a lot of that. Um, and that anti-Asian sentiment and racism. So it's upsetting to me when I have friends and family that are, you know, grocery shopping and getting racially slurred at. Um, you know, it's really personal for me um, because the people that I know are being affected. And you know, I, I want to always try to be careful, especially right now, saying during the pandemic, like just because the pandemic ends at some point. It doesn't mean that this conversation needs to stop. I think it's much more relevant and unfortunately just directly kind of parallels with with what's going on um, across the globe. But what do you think has been kind of the, you know, moment of shock for especially Asian Americans kind of having this sudden like fierce strike of racism hit them when, like you said, when you go to the grocery store, when you're out in public or own a um, Asian based restaurant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Even just like I'm a chef here, I have a lot of friends that have uh, Asian restaurants and people aren't patroning them. And, um, you know, I think, as you mentioned, it's something that, yeah, during the pandemic, <laughs> but it's it's ongoing and it's something that we have to keep talking about and keep speaking out for. Um, I know even myself as an Asian American, I I was taught at a young age to silence my voice and to be quiet. And I just don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> you know, I really feel now is the time to speak up, all of us and, and the allies out there um, to support one another and, yeah, hopefully stop this. So what is the damage that you think comes from not speaking up or not addressing this or, or just putting kind of a turn the other cheek style towards towards all of these issues? Yeah, I, th I think if we keep ignoring, uh, that's the problem. You know, that's what's create, that's, it's just gonna keep continuing the spiral and get worse um, if we don't speak up. And, you know, you have the Black Lives uh, Matters movement happening right now, and that's also something that's been forever going on. And, you know, they are the pioneers that really 
um, have been advocating for all of the marginalized communities out there. And so I think by speaking out together, um, that's where we're going to be heard. And, you know, this conversation has circulated a lot around COVID impacting directly people of color and definitely, you know, having a more severe effect on those communities. What is critical when we're, one, dealing with that, but also dealing with a nationwide movement with the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of intertwining these two things to understand that we we need to be advocating for as many marginalized communities as possible. Certainly. I mean, at the end of the day, we are all human. We are all the same. And we shouldn't be going backwards in time. <laughs> you know, I feel I feel like that's what's happening, um, at, at least with what's happening within the Asian community. And so um, I don't know, I just feel very upset by that. And I'm like, we need to really work together to move forward and and stop. Yeah. And stop going backwards <laughs> again. It just like is very upsetting for me. Well, you're in San Francisco. I'm in New York. Uh, I've seen clearly the direct impact uh, the pandemic has had specifically on Asian restaurants, especially Asian owned restaurants. Uh, what what has the experience been like for you and what have you been seeing kind of as a pattern, especially within the last couple of months? Sure. Um, you know, I myself have a restaurant, but I have a lot of friends that do, and especially the Asian ones are suffering. Um, and it's not just restaurants, Asian businesses, um, the Chinatowns out here are struggling. Um, you know, so I am constantly trying to advocate for how we can support these communities and these businesses. Um, you know, for me, it's like I, I try to order from my favorite dim sum restaurant down the street and, and just help support them where I can. And I always encourage others out there to do so because restaurants are hurting as a whole, um, but specifically the Asian ones are really struggling right now. And, you know, I know we'll show the PSA at, at the end of this conversation, but it does a really great job of humanizing everyone. It takes away, you know, the job that you might have, it dissects, you know, what ethnicity or community you, you belong to and really just says, I'm a person. And I think that's such an important thing to remember when we're, when we're discussing any community, but why specifically did this uh, theme resonate with you? Why did you want to join this campaign specifically? Um, you know, Ad Council reached out and I just felt this was so important to, to be a part of. Um, and just seeing the people that they were pulling together for this, you know, it's really just everyone that's out there doing their job and trying to help the community, um, especially during the global pandemic. And as you mentioned, we are just people. We are human. We are out there. Um, you know, there's nurses out there that are, and people in the medical world that are helping others. Um, there's people like me that are chefs and we are just end of the day, real people trying to just help. And so aside from supporting local businesses and supporting restaurants or maybe using, you know, money as kind of the, the way to advocate, what are other ways that people can show their advocacy or activism uh, directly with Asian Americans? Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, you know, certainly listening it starts with listening, <laughs> especially to the PSA that you're going to see soon, um, and sharing uh, that information where you can, whether it's social media or having a conversation with your family at home, at the dinner table. Um, I think just continuing to talk about it is, is where we can start. And um, also, you know, I think just if you see it happening in front of you, if you see something happening at... Uh, you know, you're at a grocery store and you see somebody getting racially slurred at, fight back, speak up for that person, because sometimes that person is not in a position or don't, they may not feel they're in a position to say anything and they just, they take it and they silence themselves. But I think sticking up for one another is, is what we can do. You know, now this has done quite a few conversations about this already. One of my colleagues hosted a live stream uh, discussion about this as well. And a really great point was being mindful of how you respond if you are the one having a racial slur directed at you. What, what do you think is the best 
way to handle that? How do you approach it or how do you stand up for yourself in a productive, in a productive manner? Um, I think at least for me, I'm all about love and less hate. And so I think for, you know, for me in times when, um, you know, I wish I was at the market with my brother-in-law who was getting racially slurred at, uh, you know, last month, um, cause I would have probably went up to that person and said, Hey, let's show a little more love, you know, like why, like why is it necessary to continue to add more hate in the world? Um, because again, you know, we are all the same and we are just people trying to get by. <laughs> There's always this interesting, I think, defense mechanism we use to say, like, I was born in America or I'm not even from this country or somehow trying to explain to another person, like rationalize why they're, they're out of line. Do you find mm -hmm. that doing that is, damaging or or kind of just like a natural defense mechanism because we don't know what else to say um i mean it's it could i think it could be a little bit of both you know i think um yeah we don't know what to say sometimes and you know i'm a chinese american and i do feel i do feel i'm in i live in both worlds and sometimes i'm not sure if i'm a, if i'm chinese enough or if i'm american enough but end of the day, I was born here and I'm an American. And I think to have racism happen, that is the most like un-American thing because this country is built on immigrants. It's built on diversity. And so I do feel uh, responding in that way can be a good thing to say, you know, like I'm an American, we are American, <laughs> we are the same. <laughs> interesting I think some people maybe even your friends or in your community aren't even aware that this racism is happening like, that kind of seems it's like almost crazy to think that some people don't even understand that it's happening right under their nose you know and it can be in the most subtle ways that we're watching something unfold and don't even coin it to be racism so how are you better educating your circle to be more aware yeah, I mean, it's certainly um, shocking for some when they find out that this is even happening or like even even like, yeah, I was quarantining in Los Angeles. And I think I briefly mentioned that, you know, my brother in law was racially slurred at at the grocery store. And this is like Los Angeles, like very progressive city. So I, I can only imagine what's happening in the middle of the country where it's not as open and accepting and how that person is feeling being racially slurred at. Um, so I think just bringing awareness again and having these conversations with friends and family, continuing to talk about real experiences that have happened to people that, you know, um, make humanizes it more and makes it a little more real. Um, so yeah, I think just continuing to talk because if we silence ourselves, we're not going to solve anything. You are uh, quite the trifecta of activism when it comes to supporting women, when it comes to supporting the LGBTQ plus community, and when it comes to supporting Asian Americans. What do you find is the, the common core with all of these things that you're advocating for uh, when it comes to, you know, the whether it be Pride Month or Black Lives Matter movement and all these different kind of annual designated advocacy times, but really year round, there's a common thread, I think. Yeah. I mean, I just happen to be a Chinese American woman who works in a kitchen. I've, I've experienced um, a lot of different challenges in my life, but I think a lot of people can relate to that, whether, you know, whether they are a different um, ethnic background or, you know, I think just what I've seen as the common link is that we all have struggles. Um, they may look different and they may feel different, but they, there's still that common thread of, you know, why are we being marginalized and why are we feeling so small in these situations? Um, and how can we join together to uplift each other and love each other and support each other? Um, so I think that's something that I've been recognizing uh, and, con and trying to continue to be a better human at just like listening and, and where I can to other people's experiences. Um, and I'm recognizing there's, there's a common thread here, although it may, it may look different, but it's similar struggles. 
do you feel that we're a little spread thin trying to figure out how we best advocate for all of these different things going on? I know Black Lives Matter movement is something that's you know pretty much in every headline that we're seeing, uh, but I. I can understand how some communities might feel that that's overshadowing other conversations like this one, but maybe overshadowing isn't, isn't the word that we should be using because, you know, that movement seems to be fighting for a lot of people in a lot of marginalized communities. Would you agree? I agree with that. You know, I don't think it's overshadowing. I think it's joining together um, because yeah, black, the black lives matter movement, um, you know, especially back during the civil rights time era, they like pioneered um, what we have today it was with LGBTQ rights, women's rights, um, you know, being an Asian American and be able to walk down the street and feel equal. Um, so it all kind of started there, um, but it's representing so much more um, and not just the black community, it's representing everyone that is in these uh, marginalized um, uh, communities. You mentioned growing up that you were taught to be silent and a little more uh, passive with, with, you know, your advocacy or speaking up for yourself. Um, what's your advice to young people now who maybe were brought up with that ideology, but uh, clearly there, there's power in using your voice. What's your advice to them? Yeah, I think um, a lot of Asian Americans um, you know, have grown up where our parents, especially our immigrant parents, have told us to keep a low profile, <laughs> be quiet, don't be seen, don't be heard. Um, but that doesn't get us anywhere. And I think the, I hope the younger generations, um, especially right now during this time, are recognizing how powerful it is to use your voice um, and how that can, can invoke a lot of change. Um, so I do hope we continue to speak up um, use that voice and use it loud. What do you think is the the biggest thing you've learned about advocacy, especially within the last couple of months when the pandemic hit? The biggest thing I think I've learned is, um, you know, finding that community, you know, finding people that uh, are like-minded in that sense and joining together because that's where you feel supported most. And, um, you know, I felt that through even just being a, a queer member of the LGBTQ community and finding finding my, you know, that group to really um, have conversations with and be able to uplift and support one another and, and uh, do pride parades and those sort of things. So I think um, there's really so much power in finding your community. And so, speaking uh, your best advice for anyone who wants to be a better ally? For those wanting to be better allies, um, listen, you know, I think um, keep your ears open, listen, have conversations. Um, you may not agree, but at least I think it starts with listening and being able to trying to understand where you can. Um, and then from there, hopefully moving forward and taking action where you can. Well, I definitely am so thankful to have people like you that we can speak with and, and be a role model for young people. And I, I'm excited for everyone to see this PSA uh, from Love Has No Labels, but also lovehasnolabels.com offers some really great resources of how, one, to have these conversations at home, to recognize any bias or racism within any given situation. Uh, what to you is the most important tool you think when we're addressing these issues? What's the most important resource we can be accessing? Um, I mean, certainly, you know, just even just throw it in Google and like research, you know, read. I think that is so powerful on its own. Um, and then, yeah, the PSAs like this, where it helps at least inform you that this is even existing, <laughs> but you know, go and do some research, um, uh, you know, read about it, learn the history. I think um, that's the most powerful thing anyone can do right now. Well, I feel like I've teased this PSA enough. I, uh, I want to thank you for, again, taking the time to chat with me. I 
I know you're uh, very busy with all this advocacy for so many communities and we're certainly appreciative of it. Um, again, this PSA is called Fight the Virus, Fight the Bias. And again, Melissa King, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jackie. I've heard people make comments like, thanks for bringing the virus over. Didn't it come from you guys? A passenger told me that I should go back to China. I've had strangers cough at me. People move away from me. Someone spit three times towards my direction. I felt so violated. My biggest fear is that all the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed. And I won't let that happen. Everyone has to keep everyone else safe. We all have to play our part. I've been spending eight to 10 hours a day making masks. I donate my plasma. As an essential worker, I'm delivering food, groceries for my community. I mean, I know I'm putting myself at a little extra risk, and I'm happy to do it. It's really hard to talk about racism when all I want to do is cry about it. You have to talk about it to other people. You have to tell them these things exist. We're all human. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse, not a virus. I'm a delivery woman. I'm a rideshare driver. I'm a chef, a neighbor, artist, bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Fight the virus.